Yo, what's up, guys? Today we are reacting to a video from the channel called Drew Dernal. You can check it out in the description. And this is how Sweden, Denmark, and Norway almost conquered the world. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's check it out. You could probably look back at just about any country in history and pinpoint an exact moment where if things had just gone a little differently, they could be a global superpower today. Scandinavia, for instance, is just one of those rare, rare places where they've had multiple chances and every time it just didn't work out. Sweden, Denmark, Norway, they all share a very similar history, but I'd argue they never really had their Roman Empire moment, but they were close. I think they were really close. And I think a lot of people just underestimate how powerful they were in certain centuries. Now I know you- I mean, are- okay, maybe he's gonna mention that, but are they not powerful now? Are they not like a superpower now? You're probably saying, you're probably thinking, Drew, this is stupid. You're being stupid again, and I would agree with you, but you're thinking, you know, they don't really have that much population, they don't really have the greatest land up there, uh, but I would argue that even if that is the case, if they were to challenge someone like the HRE, or competed for territory in the New Worlds, or even like stopped Russia from forming by expanding in a similar way they did, that'd be a pretty big deal. I think they'd be pretty powerful after that. Yeah, I mean, size doesn't really matter. You look at the UK and Portugal, they conquered the whole world and they're like tiny countries. So yeah, this is probably the first thing to Compared to where I'm from, of course. <laughs> Came to your mind and i think a lot of people assume this is like the closest they ever got to greatness i mean they almost controlled all of the british isles as well as huge chunks of continental europe if only they just like held on to that things got started when the vikings pillaged a british monastery because you know why not it was there and the boys were just having some fun but this is really <laughs> what kicked things off and for the next 300 years it would only get worse but i should probably take this time to mention the vikings were not one large group of people all serving under like a massive scandinavian viking empire even though that sounds cool they were actually independent smaller kingdoms that often would fight each other just for reasons it also gets a little bit more complicated because this age in northern europe isn't really documented i mean most of the info we have on this area was written by their enemies so could be a little bit biased, I don't know. Maybe there's some fake news in there. But keep in mind, they weren't just raiding, pillaging, and killing. They were also colonizing, which is nicer than those other three. The Vikings were surprisingly big on exploration. Their journeys led them through most of Europe, Africa, parts of Asia, and yes, even North America. Lee Ferrickson. Do you think, guys, if um, Scandinavia was united back then and not fighting each other, do you think they would actually conquer the world? What are your thoughts on that? set out from Greenland to find easier access to wood. Fun fact, Greenland was supposedly discovered by his father after he murdered a few people from Iceland and he had to like escape or something like that. But the Vikings ended up building settlements in what they called Vinland. There's also evidence that they regularly Vinland. came in contact with Native Americans, whether through trade or through war. The Vikings refer to them as uglies, I guess. Really? <laughs> I, uh, I don't even know what to say about that. But back in Europe, the North Sea Empire- Is that like the direct translation? Skralings, 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 am I saying that right? Skralings. <laughs> I, uh, I don't even know what to say about that. But back in Europe, the North Sea Empire was probably their best chance of maybe controlling the world at the time, at least. Either if this dude didn't die so fast, he, he died really fast, or even better, if Harald Hardrada was successful in reconquering England. Uh, things would have been different, but when he died, that was kind of the end of the Vikings is over after that. Oh, and also the Swedish Vikings were doing fun things in Eastern Europe, but uh, very little is known about that. I just wanted to throw that out there. Most of the Scandinavian kingdoms were eventually converted to Christianity. They were no longer able to party like they used to, could just go around burning monasteries down. This specific what-if scenario still leaves a lot of question marks. It's hard to say if this would have changed enough. I, I mean, it might have, who knows? They also eventually left North America because supposedly there were too many natives to fight, not enough. Vikings, and their settlements were forgotten about for a while. If only they, I don't know, invested more resources or time into this continent, that would have been a fascinating universe, just a Viking new world. Oh, and before we move so on, by the end of this age, that? independent Norway would have to take a back seat to Sweden and Denmark for a while. Unfortunately, this land was just going to get passed around between the two, like a village bicycle. The Kalmar Union was a series of personal unions that formed a couple centuries after the Vikings, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, as well as their colonies, were all united under a single king. Uh, don't forget, this included parts of modern-day Finland, so 
they were looking pretty thick. And one of the main reasons why they formed this Nordic Avengers was to block German expansion. The Nordic Avengers. Expansion northward into the Baltic region. Problem is, this union would occasionally break up and then kind of get back together. It was a very unstable relationship. And this was usually because the head monarch wanted even more power, but the individual countries resisted. Keep in mind, the individual countries were still separate states. They just kind of followed the monarch for certain policies. Relations between Denmark and Sweden caused several wars, and that caused the end of the Union. And there was only going to be more wars into the future. Yeah, the Swedes wanted to go out and do their own thing, but uh, the Danes and Norwegians, they were still cool. They still worked through their problems. But time had passed, and at this point, I, I don't know if do you think, if you're from Norway or, De uh, sorry, if you're from Sweden or Denmark, do you feel that there is some kind of resentment? Because I know that, like, in my country, Brazil, when we speak to Portuguese people, we don't feel any resentment, but then it's very sensitive if you go into history and if you go into a politic you know, if you go into politics, and it depends on the topic, then yes, there's a lot of resentment there. <laughs> Do you find yourself um, arguing with your Danish friends or your Swedish friends? Let me know in the comments, that's interesting. The Danes started having feels for their ex again or something. They, they wanted to bring it all back together. And it was 40 years later, so you know they had something special. It's what was referred to as the Northern Seven Years' War, and it was between Sweden versus Denmark, Norway, and Poland. Kind of one-sided there, I know, but surprisingly the Swedes held on, and the conflict would end in a stalemate, territories remained the same, but Kalmar Union was officially over. But wait, there is more. The burning hatred between these two couldn't be extinguished. I mean, it's still even kind of lingering to this day. The Kalmar War was declared by the That was my question, you know, if it's still something that, you know, you make fun of each other, even if it's, you know, healthy, but I don't know. Swedes to finally put an end to Denmark's grip over Nordic lands. You see, both countries' main goal was to control the Baltic Sea. That was like the big thing they all focused on. This was kind of the main reason for like all wars in Northern Europe at this time. The HRE and Poland-Lithuania had depressing navies, so there was kind of a power vacuum here. Though Denmark would go on to somewhat defeat Sweden, this would be their final victory over them for two centuries. You know, if Denmark just somehow came off with a victory sooner or earlier, they might have been able to keep their personal union alive. Or if they just found a way to give the monarch even more powers while it was still a thing, that would have worked too. You know, maybe copy the strategy of Poland, Lithuania, it really kind of worked out for them for a while. But regardless, a united Scandinavian nation throughout the Middle Ages and the Renaissance would have been scary. Their dominance over the North might have changed the landscape of Europe forever. The Great so as I Northern said, War. the main goal of countries in this region was to control the Baltic Sea. And at this point, Sweden had almost done that. They were a serious superpower, and they posed a pretty big threat to just about all the nations on the continent. Sweden had already beaten Russia a few times in the past, and had proven that they were much better fighters than it might seem. But this Great Northern War would be their biggest challenge yet. It would also be the last of the Northern Wars. There were several of those in the last 200 years. A coalition formed between Russia, Denmark, Poland, Prussia, and even more, Russia. all to end this Swedish superpower. And it was a complicated conflict because it went over the course of 21 years and multiple countries like peaced out and then re-entered the war later. I don't know, it's a big mess. But in the beginning, Sweden started off strong. They managed to force Denmark, Norway, and Poland out of the war. The problem would of course be Russia, as it always is. And <laughs> oh this would end goodness. up being just another example of a leader underestimating their size and climate. Mm -hmm. Where have we seen that before? Sweden probably should have listened to their Finnish territory on this one. They know how to beat Russia, but this was 200 years prior to, to that, so I don't know. Both sides suffered heavy casualties, but the Swedes wow. were eventually defeated. This war was the wow. beginning of Russia. You know, this is kind of sad because um, you can see the difference here. 200,000 Swedes were, wait. Wow. 175,000 Swedish nationals died of famine, disease, and exhaustion. So you see that the war, it doesn't only bring death and chaos during the... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm in front of the... 
Let me just fix this for you guys to see. Bro, look at this. About 200,000 Swedes. 25 killed in combat, but 175 killed by fa uh, famine, disease, or exhaustion. So you can see that the war isn't only about people dying while they're fighting. It's about the consequences that, you know, the the what happens to the country, the consequences, and, you know, the economy, and everything that it affects. So it doesn't really only affect those who go to war, the soldiers, but it, it affects the, 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 the population also. Um, Russians, 315,000 were killed, wounded, and captured. Bro, I mean, Russia ends up, and like, you know, they end up, getting their soldiers killed more than other countries. Oh, wait. It, oh, wow. Wait a second. So you're saying that there were 110 or 315,000 Russians killed? Or did the Russians kill, wound, and capture the Poles, Saxons, and Danes. Oh, wow. Okay, I thought the, the Russians were getting killed. Bro, that is sad. Actually defeated. This war was the beginning of Russia's rise in the Baltic region, as well as just like a new major player in Europe. As for Sweden, on the other hand, their absolute monarchy would come to an end, along with they would lose all their like overseas territories. <laughs> kind of overseas. The Swedes had made several mistakes during this conflict. It's hard to say if like a total victory was even possible. I think their best bet would have been just like a, a status quo type piece. The, after their initial victories, maybe just getting out of it would have been best. They could have remained a great power in the North and then possibly sided with like Napoleon a century later. I, I don't know, maybe both like France and a super Sweden. Maybe they could have defeated Russia. Denmark and Norway ended up siding super with the big blob, but that wasn't really by choice. So, who knows what the Swedish Empire would have done. Now, these were just a few times Northern Europe could have maybe united and, I don't know, dominated their continent. But there was also the Swedish-Polish Union. This was a short-lived personal union that lasted for seven years. It broke apart, though, because of a civil war. But, wow, this thing would have been scary. Then there was New Sweden in modern-day Delaware. This was a colony made up of Swedes, Finns, and some Dutch. The problem was it would later be conquered by the Dutch and incorporated into their new Netherlands territory. This is kind of like a, a meme. People like to make fun of Sweden for trying this. They didn't really have like a strong enough navy to protect their stuff in America. Actual colonial empire. Ikea. Wow, that is funny, man. But what if they did? Like a Swedish 13 colonies, that would have been fun. Finally. What about nowadays in, in modern times if they all you know, if Scandinavian countries all unite, wouldn't they be a superpower today? If they do that? Isn't that worth thinking about? I don't know. What would you think of that? Finally, there was also the Danish East Indian Company and the Swedish East Indian Company, which combined at their height imported more tea than the British. Unfortunately, that ended during the Napoleonic Wars. All of yeah, they, all of them. And did, the Brits love their well. tea. But this could have made a small difference in a universe dominated by Scandinavia. Sweden is now as neutral as Switzerland, believe it or not. Their last war was also over 200 years ago. Denmark and Norway, on the other hand, yeah, they they didn't get so lucky. So each nation here had at least one or more opportunities of maybe changing the world, but it just didn't work out for anyone. Norway is usually mostly credited for the famous Viking invasions. Denmark had a chance to force everyone into their Kalmar Union, and Sweden unfortunately could not keep their empire together after the Great Northern War. But obviously, even if one of these scenarios did work out, it's hard to say what it would have led to. I think, like I said in the beginning, their best bet would probably be to take out Russia early on and then do the same thing, expanding towards Siberia. But at the same time, we're living in a universe with PewDiePie, <laughs> Maybe the Scandinavians will still one day conquer the world. Bork, 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 Hinga, Dinga, Durgan. Thanks for watching. Big thanks to LBC, Elijah Senpai, Bruce Rocation, Swiss Art. Is that, is that like real, a uh, real la language that he said? Dork, dork, I don't know what he said. We're living in a universe with PewDiePie. The funny thing is that 
Um, this is the most replayed when he said PewDiePie. Maybe the Scandinavians will still one day conquer the world. Bork, bork, bork. Hinga dinga durgan. Thanks for Hinga dinga durgan. Bork, bork, bork. Hinga dinga I don't know what he said there. But anyways, guys, yeah. PewDiePie is definitely one of the biggest YouTubers and... <laughs> He definitely represents um, Sweden, I, I think. What do you think of that? Do, do you guys think um, PewDiePie represents Sweden? Or do you have any resentment against him or something like that? I don't know. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know more if you want me to react to Sweden, Denmark, Norway, Finland, you know, any um, Scandinavia, Scandinavia um, and Scandinavian videos. <laughs> This was an interesting take. Go check out the channel. Um, the link is in the description. And let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think um, Scandinavia will take over the world? <laughs> I'll see you soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me A Coffee today. Find out more. The link is in the description. Never break. Always fight, never quit, do it right.